Today I'm going to demonstrate the exciting new features in Soundcheck 22. This release is packed with new functionality for both production line testing and R&D. There's also a strong focus on integration with other elements of your test setup. In this short demo, I'll be showing you how you can develop custom functions in Soundcheck using Python. I'll demo our new Crest Factor algorithm, and we'll look at our new sequence versioning capability. I'll show you some enhancements to our statistics, metadata, and post-processing functionality. Finally, I'll walk you through some virtual instrument additions. Before we get into the demos, let me share with you that Soundcheck now works on Apple Silicon processors, also known as the M-Series. I know that a lot of you have been eagerly awaiting this, and I can tell you that it provides a significant improvement in speed and performance. Step and sequence editing, in particular, are considerably faster. OK, let's get started. You've been able to control Soundcheck with Python for a few years now, but this release brings an optional module that lets you call custom Python functions from a Soundcheck sequence. This makes it really easy to pass data and variables between Soundcheck and other devices or programs. One of the biggest applications for this is to pass commands to your device under test. If you need to put your smart device into diagnostic mode or play a test signal from it, you can now write a custom step in Python to communicate directly with your device and use this in a test sequence. You can also use Python steps to communicate with databases and other software. For example, to pass directional measurements to polar balloon plotting software, such as VAX and EASE. If you like to run MATLAB analysis on your soundcheck measurements, you can automate this using the Python custom step to send data back and forth. This is an alternative to using custom VIs in LabVIEW. Using Python custom steps simplifies programming and maintenance, as there's no need to own LabVIEW, program in LabVIEW, or update custom steps with each new release. You can also take advantage of open source scripts. Python integration is an optional module and can be added to any soundcheck system when you upgrade to the latest version. We've added a new Crest Factor Analysis algorithm. Crest Factor Analysis is a technique that measures the peak to RMS ratio. It can be used to evaluate impulsive distortion and analyze the dynamic range of real signals. You can access this in the Analysis Editor, along with Soundcheck's other distortion algorithms, and it's a simple checkbox to add this measurement. You can also configure your multimeter to calculate and display Crest Factor real time on an input signal. Crest Factor Analysis complements Soundcheck's unique enhanced loose particle algorithm for transient distortion measurement and enables comparison of the two methods side by side using the same measured data. This makes it easy to evaluate Soundcheck's enhanced loose particle algorithm against this more standard metric offered in other measurement systems. Sequence versioning is a new feature that makes it easy to keep track of your sequence changes. It also helps ensure that everyone is using the right sequence, whether it's your colleagues, your manufacturing facility, or even a contract manufacturer. When you make changes to a sequence, you could save it as either a major or a minor version We've included comment fields so it's easy to document the differences between versions, and the sequence history view displays a log of historical changes to the sequence. Sequence archiving functionality lets you back up the sequence while it's being developed and lets you roll back changes if you need to. Soundcheck statistics module is completely overhauled to make it more powerful and intuitive. We have a new layout that makes data selection easier, and curves, values, and results can now simply be dragged and dropped from the memory list into the statistics editor. A new reset statistics step allows statistics to be reset during a sequence. This is useful if you need to apply statistical analysis to data from a sequence loop or a fixed number of measurements. 
The statistics data and sample count can be automatically cleared, ready for the next measurement once you've reached your desired settings. Enhanced searching, including metadata, makes it easy to select groups of curves from the memory list and is now even possible to specify a frequency range to run statistics. Post-processing is your R&D toolbox, and we've added new advanced functionality that increases soundcheck's flexibility for complex applications. First, we've added native calculation to any base. We've always offered a base E, but now we've added base 2, 10, and custom values to the list of options. We've also included an option to calculate LEQ, equivalent continuous sound level, versus time. This is commonly used in noise monitoring and communications applications, particularly in communication standards. There are also new options when specifying intersection points for calculations. Rather than software automatically returning the interpolated intersection point, you can now specify the nearest data point or closest above or below. There's now an option to ignore units in arithmetic and constant post-processing to facilitate simple mathematical calculations. This lets you, for example, quickly subtract a fixed unitless number of dB to correct sound level from the near field to the far field. Lastly, to give more flexibility with time-windowed measurements, a cosine taper custom window allows the leading and trailing taper widths of the post-processing FFT to be customized. You can also output the custom window to the memory list. This is useful for time windowing a transfer function impulse response and can be used in other measurements such as spatial audio. We introduced metadata last year, and in this release, we've added functionality to make it even more powerful. A metadata message step can now include more information about the test, such as a memory list value and a sequence start time. This automatically adds relevant information during the run of a sequence that will then be saved with the results. It can be applied to either a single measurement, say something like a serial number read from a barcode, or a whole batch of measurements, maybe the manufacturer date. This step can also be used at the end of a sequence after the measurement to allow the user to input information regarding the DUT, for example, a subjective opinion of the sound quality during the test sweep. Metadata can even be loaded from a file in the editor if there's a lot of information that needs to be entered. It's easy to identify results by metadata as we've now added the ability to search metadata in the memory list. You can even display the metadata of any selected curve simply by selecting it in the display window. We've upgraded our signal generator and multimeter with added support for accelerometers and shakers to support our customers who need to measure vibration as well as sound. This might be, for instance, for fan noise measurements, vibrating car seats, and MEMS microphone accelerometer combinations. You can now calibrate acceleration units in G, as well as meters per second square, and even get real-time integration of acceleration to velocity in the multimeter. This enables acoustic characteristics to be plotted against rotation speed. We've also added functionality for audio signal playback you can now set maximum and minimum output levels and frequencies in the signal generator to limit the range of the signal path. This prevents accidental equipment damage, for example, accidentally playing a very high level signal through a speaker or artificial mouth. These levels are retained when the configuration is saved or used in a sequence, but levels can still be manually adjusted within these ranges. Waveforms can now be played back at their original recorded level with no gain applied. Just right click into the level field and use the original level. This is useful for listening tests where you want to make sure the playback volume is exactly the same level as when it was measured. We've also made some exciting enhancements to the multi-instrument. 
This dual purpose instrument includes both an RTA and FFT analyzer. You can even display the same data on both at the same time. What's cool about this latest version is that you now have total control over the size and location of your displays. A single multi-instrument can now have multiple simultaneous display windows, and these are now detached from the control panel. This means that not only can you have as many displays as you want, but they can be resized and repositioned for unlimited desktop flexibility. You can also use your multi-instrument windows in sequence steps if you want to display results while the sequence is running. Calculations in the RTA and FFT have also been enhanced. You can now do real-time calculations on a combination of live and stored curves. This means, for example, that you can use subtraction to clearly show in real time the difference between live results in any reference curve. This has many applications, for example, tuning a device to a target curve. Lastly, a new DB addition option expands its calculation capabilities. For example, when you want to measure the combination of two sound sources in a room. So there you have it. That's a summary of the many new features in Soundcheck 22. Whether you are doing R&D or production testing, there's something in there for you. If you'd like a demonstration or even a quote for an upgrade or a new system, please contact your local sales engineer or listen rep. Thanks for watching.